Indeed, all praises belong to Allah, the one who created us and fashioned us. So we praise Allah knowing that our words will always fall short, but knowing that our Lord is merciful and loves when we turn to him. We, see, we, we seek assistance from God knowing that there is no power or might except for that which our Creator has given us. We seek forgiveness from our Creator, from our numerous shortcomings and mistakes and failings as humans. We seek refuge in God from the evil actions that may emanate from us and the intentions that may incubate within us. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is a messenger and a servant. Whoever God guides cannot be misguided and whoever God does not grant guidance to cannot be guided. Allah reminds us in the Quran when he tells us addressing those who aspire to be believers Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun O you who aspire to be believers be mindful of God in the way that God should be made mindful of and do not leave this world in any state except for submission to him and he reminds humanity at large when he addresses us Ya ayyuha al-nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahid wa khalaqa minha zawjaha وَبَاثَ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِرًا وَنِسَاءً وَأَتَقُوا اللَّهَ أَلَّذِي تَسَأَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْهَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O mankind, be mindful of your Lord who created you, created from you its spouse, and created from that many men and many women. And be mindful of God in whose names you make oaths with one another, and beware of severing the ties of the family, Indeed, Allah, God, is ever watchful over you. Alhamdulillah. I think I need to start with seeking forgiveness from the jamaat here. I think I brought my bad weather from Chicago with me. So I do apologize. But even in something like rain and clouds is nourishment from the heavens, which gives growth to the food and many other things that we need. So may Allah continue to bless us with his barakah. Say ameen. Alhamdulillah. So recently I had an incident, and this is probably not too... Uh, foreign for many of us here my mother had a responsibility on her shoulders that she was struggling with a challenge she had in her life and I could tell it was taking a toll on her so I did what most children would do or most people uh, who care about people in their lives and said hey you know what I'll take care of this for you I'll take this responsibility that's weighing you down and I'll put it on my shoulders because I can do this she said Mikey are you sure you can do it I said, yeah, yeah, inshallah. Actually, I don't know if I said inshallah. So I said, yeah, I can do it, mom. No problem. Lo and behold, you guys know how the story ends. I was not able to fulfill the responsibility that I thought would be easy, that I thought I was doing to help my mother, but instead I made things more complicated for her. And I made things more difficult and created more problems than I even sought out to try to solve. And you might say I bit off a little bit more than I could chew or I found a responsibility on my shoulders that I could not necessarily, necessarily hold the weight of. And I think all of us can relate to experiences like this in our lives where we've had, whether it's a true responsibility or a sense of responsibility on our shoulders and the, the pain of knowing that you can't live up to it. The pain and the difficulty of knowing that you wish you could have done it better. Maybe you gave it your best shot and you couldn't do it, but that weight that carries on your, on your heart is heavy. Well, this is the situation that humanity finds itself in. Huma humankind finds itself with a responsibility on its shoulders that oftentimes we forget. But in times like this, when we see what's happening in the world, it is a good reminder for us to remember that there is a responsibility on our shoulders and when the world seems like a mess, we still have a role. When you feel like your hands are, are tied and there's a handcuff on you and you can't do anything, there's plenty you can still do. And more than that, the responsibility is on our shoulders to do that. It's an amana, a trust that rests on our shoulders. Allah tells us in the Quran, He says, Indeed, we offered al-amana, the trust, to the heavens and the earth, but they all declined to bear it. But humanity assumed it. Humanity took this amana, this trust on its shoulders. For they are truly wrongful to themselves and ignorant 
of the consequences. I'm going to recite this verse one more time for us to reflect on this notion of what a trust is and what this thing, the weight of it. When Allah says, indeed, we offered alamana, the trust, to the heavens and the earth, but they all declined to bear it. But humanity assumed it, for they are truly wrongful to themselves and ignorant of the consequences. There is a responsibility on our shoulders as human beings that we didn't take on. But it's in our human nature that we would have taken on. Because whether the scholars disagree, was it, was it Adam alayhi salam who took it on? Or was it written that humanity would always have within their fitrah, their, their human predisposition to try to help other people and to benefit other people and to try to serve Allah? Right? Regardless of what it is, we have this on our shoulders as humans, this amana. So if you feel overwhelmed with war and oppression and political upheaval and poverty and people living in the streets and genocide and so on and so forth and you feel like you can't do anything, well, it's because your fitrah, your human nature is alive inside saying that something is wrong in the world. And it's an amana, it's a trust that exists within us to try to make things better to try to help those who need it. So what is al-amana? What is the trust? And the scholars have disagreed over what this verse is because Allah asked all of the creation, the mountains, the angels, the jinn, whatever created before humanity, will you take on this amana? And they all knew, they're all wise enough to know, nah, nah, we're not taking this on because we can't live up to it. We were not gonna be able to do right by it and we're going to oppress ourselves but humanity took it on. And that's the weight that we feel at this moment in time. That this is on our shoulders. Some scholars say the amana is just the shahada, just belief in Allah and belief in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All the way to maintaining the prayer, all the way to the end, which is maintaining order in the world and being khulafa or being caretakers of the earth. And that is what I want us to focus on, the most general understanding of what al-amana is, the responsibility, the trust that's on our shoulders when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the, the angels in the Quran. The angel said, oh God, why would you create a creation on earth that will cause corruption and mischief and spill blood when we, the angels, extol you and praise you all day long endlessly and Allah responded I know that which you do not know Allah reminded the angels that his knowledge is infinite and his wisdom is very intricate and even the angels can't understand it we certainly can't but Allah reminded them I know that which you do not know because yes humans have the ability to harm other people to cause mischief and sow blood. But what else does humanity have the ability to do? To bring joy to the world, to heal people, to make things good, to bring khair. And this is the Adamic amana. This is the responsibility that is on our shoulders, the trust of being Bani Adam. The children of Adam is to be the people who do good in the world. Allah yuhibbu al-muhsineen. Allah loves those who do good things. May Allah make us of the people who do good things. May the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when we meet him, recognize us through our good actions. And that we were responsible to continue his representation in this world when Allah addressed him as the mercy to mankind. May we be seen by people around us as a mercy to mankind. And may we be people who continue to uphold goodness in this world, even though it's difficult. And may we help each other in the process to remember that on our shoulders is a responsibility that we took on ourselves one way or another to benefit others. May we be people who live up to it and who are well pleased with Allah and find Allah well pleased with us. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah 
وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين بسم الله so what does it look like to be people who uphold the amana people who are true khulafa who are true caretakers and guardians of the galaxy caretakers of the earth what does it mean to be them we can look first and foremost at the prophet peace and blessings be upon him when he was in the position of power as the head of state and the muslim ummah community was gained strong the prophet peace be upon him never looked past anybody as a matter of fact he concerned himself with things that many of us would just walk past when one of the great companions umair may allah be pleased with him he was with his nughair many of you know this story he would sit with a little birdie and play with a little birdie he was a young boy uh, when the muslims were in medina and the prophet peace be upon him would walk by often and he would see umair playing with a little bird and one day when he walked by he saw umair was sad and crying and the prophet peace and blessings be upon him although he had the weight of the world on his shoulders he knew of political instability he knew of wars and people who were trying to attack the muslims from outside and within trying to harm other people knowing that he soon would be leaving this world and there would be tribulations after him he was not above being concerned with that little boy's pain that he was feeling and the prophet peace and blessings be upon him sat with umair and he sat with him and asked him how he was and spent time with him to bring consolation to him and never looked past him. This is what it means to be someone who upholds the amana, to look to serve anyone in society and never overlook them. Or to be a young boy who had a father named Bashir. And back then when people would go to battle, the entire community would come out to wait to see when people returned and Bashir's father went out on a battle and he went out with all the other people when they started seeing the soldiers returning from the battle it's almost like a movie where you're waiting and waiting for your, your loved one your son your father your brother your husband to return from a battle and you notice that the return line is getting thinner and thinner and there's less people returning and this young boy the son of Bashir he started crying because he realized his father wasn't coming back. And the Prophet, the Habib, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, amidst all this that was happening, went straight to this boy. And he said to this young boy, he said, today I am your father and Aisha is your mother. The amount of murder and death that we're seeing in the world that we feel like we can't stop, genocide, the amount of orphans that are being happened, not just in Gaza, but around the globe, we know this is happening. Do we have this care in our heart like the Prophet ﷺ had? May we be people who pray for them and who give in our money to support causes to take care of other children the way that the Prophet ﷺ would because the Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't leave, make empty promises. When he said, you're my son and Aisha, or sorry, I'm your father and Aisha is your mother, he meant it. And if only we could zoom in and double click and see how that relationship played out and what that looked like, what a story that would be. That's our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'll end with this. One of the, another great example of what it means to be people who hold alamana, the trust to make sure that people are being taken care of and we're upholding our responsibilities is that of Omar. May God be pleased with him. Omar was the second Khalifa, the second leader of the Muslims after the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, left this worldly life. And when he was in this position of power, there was something secret that many of you may know that he did. It was the way he kept himself humble and made sure when he stood in front of Allah, he would stand in front of Allah with a pure heart. He would spend the nights going on his night patrols. So while everyone was sleeping, the uh, Omar radiallahu anhu would go out and patrol the streets to see what was happening, to see, to turn over stones, to see if there was a problem out there that he had to make sure was taken care of because he was in charge. He knew the responsibility and he forsook his own sleep to make sure that that was taken care of. And on one of his night patrols, there's many stories of his night patrols, but on this one story that I'm sharing with you, he ran across a woman who had a little tent set up and she was boiling a pot of water and she had two children next to her crying. And Omar approached, he said, is it okay if I, if I approach you? And the woman said, yes. And he said, what's going on here? Why are your children crying? She said, you know, we don't have any food. And the, the Khalifa, uh, Omar, <laughs> he's not helping us. 
She was upset. She's like, I'm trying to boil this water so my children stop crying and they go to sleep because I don't have any food to give them. Imagine what went through a pious, caring person's heart and mind at that moment. Omar was shook. Just sit there for a second to know what it feels like when you know there's a responsibility on your shoulders like I shared at the beginning and you know that you've dropped the ball or that you've overlooked something. If you're sincere, it echoes through your entire body like a bolt of lightning to the heart. Imagine how, what Omar must have felt. He left and went to Beit al-Mal, which is where they keep the charity, uh, the zakat and everything. He went over there and he grabbed a big bag of flour and and oil and other things to eat and he put it on his back and he started walking back to the woman and Omar's companion said to him Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, O leader of the believers, let me carry this bag for you and many of you know how Omar responded did he say, oh yeah, take the bag for me call the Uber, have an Uber delivery, you take care of it, no he said, who on the day of judgment is going to carry my burdens he said, I'm going to carry this back. So Omar carried on his own back the food to the woman. And he sat with the woman until she cooked the food and made sure her kids were fed and, fell and went to sleep. And he made sure she had regular supply of food after that. And he left, never even telling her who he was. This is what it means to be people who exemplify the alamana and take care of the responsibilities and the trust upon us. We probably have millions of stories of people in this community who serve people who are, who are needy and underserved, who serve the masjid and the community and have international charities and all kinds of things. Because our community is beautiful. It's the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I ask that all of us take a minute to ask ourselves what we can do. Whether it's smiling at the children running around in the masjid. So they want to come back. Whether it's giving some extra sadaqah to the mosque, whether it's asking the administrators if you can help out, whether it's looking in the car, in the parking lot for someone, like my car, alhamdulillah I got a new car now, but I've been driving with a, on a donut, you know, <laughs> you see a guy driving on a donut, put some money in his car, slide it in, so that way, hey, that'll help him out. Find ways to give, find ways to serve. Do what we can to help people, because in these, this day and age when the world is crazy and falling apart, we have to know we do have a purpose. Our purpose is to serve and to benefit others, especially those who are most vulnerable. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who take care of those who need it. May we fulfill this crazy responsibility on our shoulders that we inherited, that even the heavens and the earth wouldn't take, may we do right by it. <coughs> With all of the, the madness and uncertainty and violence in the world, our job is to uphold the Adamic manna to the best of our ability, to pray, to give charity, to benefit other people, to be the best that we can be. We ask that Allah accept this prayer from us today, especially on this blessed day when it is raining, and we know that that is a blessing to make prayers on a day when it is raining. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina dabana. Our Lord, give us the best in this life and the life to come and protect us from the torment of the fire. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين. Our Lord, indeed, we are we are in a state of loss if you do not have mercy and forgiveness upon us. ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا ودرياتنا كرة أيون وجعلنا للمتقين إماما. Our Lord, give us from our spouses and our offspring the coolness of our eyes and raise from amongst us righteous leaders.